The Order of Santar is a not-for-profit religious educational organization of spiritual enlightenment. Students and practitioners alike can, in freedom, learn traditional and alternative ways and belief systems. They can cooperate amongst each other and practice these ways in groups, congregations, covens, or solitarily. Each member determines his or her own interests and specialties, what they choose to study, what they choose to practice, what they believe, how fast and how much they learn, how, how far they delve into these different mysteries. Those ordained through the Order of Centaur may legally perform all functions of religious ministries and sacraments, such as weddings and baptisms. We study all major religions, as well as those lesser known and not as widely practiced. We seek to incorporate truths from the religions that we study into our own systematic theology. A Centaurian is not dogmatic, son. He sees the light and love in everyone. He knows that every church of God is true, and synagogue, and mosque, and temple too. He reveres the cross and what it means, mother and son, called Nazarenes. At a Buddhist shrine, he too will bow his head. He has respect for what Confucius said. A Hindu Gita he will understand. To a Taoist, he will lend a helping hand. His motto for this earth and men thereof is brotherhood respects a brother's love by Reverend M.N. Antone Wood, one of the founding members of the Order of Centaur. I want to give you a little bit of background into the Order of Centaur. I'm not going to bore you with a whole lot of history, but the sooner we can get through the background, the better, faster we can get on to topics of more interest to everybody. Uh, in 1972, a group of friends got together in the Pacific Northwest to establish a common belief system among themselves that they could practice together. Most were pagans. Some were interested in other mystical traditions such as the Golden Dawn, ceremonial magic, and so forth. Having come out of the hippie days and into the 70s, they kept their beliefs and practices mostly secret. This group of friends came together to form a new non-dogmatic tradition that was organized better than the dispersed group of friends that they started out being. They conceived and founded the Order of Centaur and began to establish the legality of the order. They registered under the umbrella of the Universal Life Church which believes in religious freedom and the common dignity of all people. Alternative religions, such as Wicca and other nature religions, have been largely regarded with suspicion and were viewed as devil worship. These views from society handed down over the centuries had not gone away. Even in the 70s and early 80s, it was still very prevalent in mainstream society. These groups were things to be avoided at all costs. It was known that they were out there, but try and find them. That was a nearly impossible feat. They didn't advertise. They basically got new members, if they were taking in new members at all, through word of mouth. If you wanted to find one... There were very few publications on Wicca. You had to go to the local metaphysical store and ask around or, you know, try to glean community information that way. It was very difficult to find them. The Order of Centaur was one of many groups that came to light in the early 1970s to dispel the myths surrounding their beliefs and let the world know what the truth was about their way of life. In 1973, a call went out among these secret societies for prominent members to come forward that a council was to be formed. Later, this was known as the Council of American Witches. 
The council's sole purpose was to establish a set of common principles that all who followed this path believed. They met only one time in 1974 and just long enough to establish a set of 13 tenants. Then they all dispersed and went back to their covens and communities. From 1974 on, many pagan, neo-pagan, and Wiccan communities came into the light. Whether they had already been formed and established or they were newly forming, they were growing in numbers and in their spiritual beliefs. In 1978, the Department of the Army put into the Chaplain's Handbook a whole section devoted to nothing but Wicca, paganism, and alternative ways of life. As time progressed, these alternative belief systems and traditions were becoming better known in the mainstream. The untruths and the myths about them were being dispelled. And during this time, the membership of the Order of Centaur fluctuated and mostly was dispersed. The founders eventually settled in the Wasatch Front, put out a newspaper ad that I answered. Answering that ad changed my life.